Hey everyone, James here. Today I wanted to talk about a common question in the aquarium hobby with botanicals and blackwater aquariums specifically is do botanicals affect the pH of your water? So for those who don't know, pH is the measurement of if your water quality is alkaline or acidic. Now a neutral pH is around 7.0, so if it's anything under that, then it's acidic. If it's anything over, then it's alkaline. So some fish, depending on where they come from in the world, like slightly more alkaline water and some like more acidic water. You find many of the fish that come from the Amazon rainforest like the water slightly more acidic. So that's why people tend to veer towards botanicals as well because it helps with that measurement. I think it's important to note that with the question of if it actually affects the pH, then yes, definitely it does. Now this is very dependent on how hard or soft your water is in the area that you live, especially if you're using tap water. Some places up north in the UK, for example, have more softer water whereas more down south they have a more harder type of water but it all depends on whereabouts in the world what kind of system that they go through when they go through their water treatment services and that's how you kind of get a general idea of how hard or soft the water is a great way to check your water before even introducing fish into the equation is to get a test kit out for example or some test strips whatever you want and just dip it into some tap water just to see what kind of measurement that you're starting with and then after that you can work out how to proceed with your botanicals. So again I think with the added botanicals element to this I would say personally things that I've tried and tested done all my research that if your water is softer then the pH level of your aquarium is going to drop more dramatically than it would if you have more harder water because of the buffering element that comes on with your KH and that's the measurement of if your water is hard or soft. So it's very important to sort of determine about how hard your water is versus how much botanicals that you can put in your aquarium. Again, if you're doing this over very, very long periods of time and your aquariums are mature enough to handle it, especially your filtration systems and your substrate, then it might be a bit different, but especially if you're starting first time ever with introducing botanicals. This is why many people suggest only go in for one or two, say leaves or something like that, just to try it out and do it on a very small measurement basis, as opposed to just dumping everything into the fish tank all in one go, because if you do that, that's when it can cause a massive pH swing. So it could just crash your pH. It's always best to be very careful. So I think the next question that most people ask is, what botanicals generate the most effect say for example on your aquarium now i think that question is very open-ended and it's uh it's a question of uh, have you tried it and sort of see how you go really my personal opinion would be that if you are using just leaves for example very small leaves something like that then obviously the effects on your tank are going to be less than what you would if you used something bigger if you're using like indian almond leaf for example then the effects of that could be more uh, than they would if you were using a smaller leaf as a guava leaf or a jackfruit leaf something like that but again it all depends i believe personally if you are using botanicals there isn't too much to be worried about i think that there is this illusion that if you dump loads in then obviously there's going to be a problem and yes that's absolutely correct if you go and absolutely just grab a whole handful of botanicals and just dump them into your aquarium especially if your tank is not able to handle that uh, your filtration everything hasn't built up that sort of beneficial bacteria enough to handle the the extra bio load because that is what it is essentially you are putting organic matter into an aquarium so it creates bio load so think of adding a leaf as similar to adding a fish Obviously there's probably a bit more waste that comes out of a fish, but you've got to get the point that if you just put too much in, then you're overloading your filtration system. So it's always best to sort of go slow, test your measurements and see how you are, and then slowly introduce more and more over time. It's always the best method to do so. I know sometimes that's not what people want to hear. They want to kind of just get on with it. But I think that there is a lot more patience with creating these blackwater aquariums or biotopes. There's more patience involved. If you are a reefer or somebody that's been used to the saltwater aquarium side of the hobby, then you'll kind of know all about patience because it's all about making sure that your aquarium and the live rock and everything is very mature before you start introducing tons and tons of things. 
especially corals because they're so sensitive to the water conditions of the tank so it's kind of similar you've just got to be patient see how it goes put one in test it and then see how you are ph it does affect the aquarium it's gonna as with anything you know it's just patience and take your time really if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've got anything to add to ph definitely let us know in the comments as well it's great to share your information and share to others especially if they are new to learning about this sort of stuff if you want to know any more about blackwater aquariums or you don't know where to start maybe check this link right here is a video playlist of all of the videos that I've set up for Blackwater Aquariums. And until next time, you stay safe.